that's uh, you know fair deals to you. So, what then uh, happens after that? Take us through what happened there and the journey to come to the UK. <laughs> So yeah, so when he went to his PhD, um, I think I started also doing a pursuing a postgraduate in HR. Mm -hmm. I think he he was also like nudging me. I think it kept me busy, and uh, you know, luckily enough, our graduations were literally days apart. Yeah. <laughs> so we did his the same month, and then and literally the the venues were like very close by. So wow. it was so it was a meaningful trip when we went for his graduation. It was for him and also for myself. Yeah. yeah. Um mm -hmm. yeah. So uh when I went to the long way, uh I remember I was I just finished my ex exam for that that first year, uh or the first semester rather, not first year. So um I was I was uh with my friends and you know having a chat about what we want to do in the future and a friend of mine called me and says hey are you looking for a job you know <laughs> i was like yeah mm -hmm. sure and they're like oh no you know so i think that week i had an interview at standard bank mm -hmm. um where i while uh, he was away i started working at standard bank as a personal assistant to the chief executive yeah uh, that also was a very interesting experience. I think um, uh, I think this guy also opened up my my mind to possibilities and uh, things. So I, I worked there for about how long? From twenty sixteen, so almost three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I worked for Standard Bank for three years um, under a very transformational uh, chief executive. Um, uh, I think he's someone that, you know, definitely if I were to write a book, he'd be in it. Uh, he was always pushing and motivating. Yeah. And he always said, well, I think when I went in, some people would look at another thing about Malawi. <laughs> people would look down on it to say, you you went to uni why are you someone's secretary yeah <laughs> and i'm like well <laughs> you know this came up and stuff but i think it also again you know you start second guessing yourself and he i remember used to send me like um links about this is obama's personal assistant he's got two mm -hmm. master's degrees and this 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 yeah. you know this job is what you make it you know you're in a very mm -hmm. It, you're well positioned you're like literally my left hand man you know mm. you have access to the bank and if you do well in this career you can put yourself anywhere anywhere in mm. anywhere in the bank and it made me look at things differently and take pride in my in my in my job so mm. yeah i think uh, meeting this person also made me think like okay because, you know, I, I was also a very shy person, mostly, and, you know, mm -hmm. made me see, okay, you can look at things differently and make the most out of, you know, uh, different situations. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, was, I worked there for some three years. And I think once uh, Chico was done with his PhD, um, you know, we we're like, okay, what's next? Uh, uh that's when the opportunity came for us to come to to england mm -hmm. uh so at that time i think my boss that i found there had also moved on and yeah. uh, the one that was there he was all right but you know he was a bit old school and the job became stagnant for yeah. me <laughs> so yeah when this opportunity came i was like okay guys peace <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'll see you, and uh, that's when we moved here in uh, 2018 mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with the family. Yeah, yeah, uh, and but this time the move was, you know, exciting. Uh, I've always wanted to come here. Um, I remember joking with my mother-in-law some years back about, oh, I've always wanted to go to England and 
have access to Europe. I was like, I'm going to do my Euro holiday at some point, yeah. <laughs> you know? For, yeah, but I'll just dream up things like that. Um, yeah. I think my, my, my journey is not just career oriented, mm -hmm. but it's life experience oriented. The life experiences, yeah. yeah. I, I love experiences. I think I always say whatever I end up in, but I want to travel, I want to see things. Yeah. You know, mm. yeah. So I think uh, we came here, uh, settled in. We had our two young kids. Um, mm. One, the first, the first one was six at the time, and mm. the second one had just turned one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think in twenty nineteen. So we came at the end of twenty eighteen. So around yeah. November, spent Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2019, I started working at a hotel here, Yeah, a front office job, um, so it was interesting, my first England job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I think that's when in, when was this, in May, so it was towards the, the beginning of the year, yeah. where I I had noticed, I think that's when my cancer journey also now started. Oh, mm -hmm. where uh, I had a lump and I thought, you know, I was rough playing with my kid and I was mm -hmm. like, hey, let me just have it checked, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I think uh, May I made an appointment with our local GP. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah, I think May and then June, I went to the big hospital and that's when uh, towards the end of June, I went to the, yeah hospital and then july is when i got my diagnosis yeah mm. yeah so yeah that was a lot because i was like i've just come here yes wow yeah, so, yeah. It must have been a lot of uh, mixed uh, emotions there you know the excitement of coming here to start a new life yeah for the family and uh, you know you had your dreams and visions of eventually coming to live in this country yeah. and then you know, boom you've got this challenge in your hands so yeah t take us through your emotions and the feelings and what was going on at, at the time yeah um i think the the first time when i when i went to the hospital mm -hmm. i think yeah i went there the first time i think it was yeah, I think that's when they did the the biopsies and things. Mm -hmm. Oh, that I think that was the second time. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're like, "Oh, your results will be out in a week or something." But I think during the process of you know the biopsies, they scan. It was like, "Oh, you know, there's a lump, but there's more." And I'm like, "Oh, really? <laughs> Why do I have more lumps?" Mm. They're like, okay, we'll take this, this, and that, uh, just to be sure, and then you'll get your results. Um, you know, usually they'll, I think, in the post, or or will call you or something, or we'll call you for your your results appointment. Mm. So, um, uh, I think they called. I think the, they're like, we'll just come back in a week. So within a week, I didn't go because a part of me was like, mm, do I want to go? I'm not ready. Yeah. Then they called me, why are you not here? I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, was I supposed to be there? It's like, oh no, they're like, okay, next week you have to be here. So I was, I remember sitting in the waiting room, I was like, hmm, I think there's something there. Yeah. So uh, I was with my husband and our youngest, uh, 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 the other one was in school mm. and uh, my son, he was, you know, being a child, I guess, was being fussy. So my husband was somewhere else in the hospital, you know, taking walks with him. So I went uh, by myself into the consultation room. Yeah. And that's when the, the, the nurse is there and the, the consultant is there. And they're like, so, you know, did you come alone? I was like, no, I came with my husband. And they're like, do you want someone to be here with you? And I'm like, that sounds bad. <laughs> mm, wow. So I'm like, okay. So I just called my husband. I was like, hey, can you come? You know, he's like, mm. okay, but I'm far. I was like, okay, fine. So I was like, oh no. Then I told the, the consultant, go ahead. Mm. And that's when they told me, oh, so we looked at your biopsies and things. And the 
radiologist uh, had some concerns. So after we examined it, we found that uh, you have cancer, they're, they're cancerous. Mm. And, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I think now I'm feeling the emotion I got like, wow. I'm very, I'm someone who laughs or, you know, giggles when I'm uh, mm. uh, anxious or, you know, with yeah. something surprising like this mm. uh, comes up. So I, I, I was like, oh, wow, you know, and I smiled, you know, but mm. I was in shock mm. at that time. And they're like, no, breathe and whatnot. So I'm like, no, tell me what you need to tell me. Yeah. So this person's like, no, we found it. Um, you've got, I think there were four lumps mm. um, around the whole breast and uh, some, one of them close to my lymph nodes under my armpit. Yeah. And, um, uh, but they're like, well, we'll have to do further tests just to make sure it's, you know, hasn't spread because it looks like it's not, it was, I think, a stage three or, yes, a stage three, but yeah. a, not a very aggressive one. So it was mm -hmm. growing, but, you know, since it was just sitting there untreated, it was growing, but it, something needs to, to be done. Yeah. So they're like, okay, so I think, you know, they're explaining all these things. I think the rest was going through one year coming out the other. Mm. Uh, then eventually my husband came and uh, I'd gone to another room with a breast nurse who now uh, explained this to him. And I was mm. just looking at him and he just looked deflated. Yeah, wow. So that was the least thing and um yeah i remember walking out of the consultation room like hey you know they look like they've had a plan because mm -hmm. they were you know they're like okay we found it we have a course of action we have to take you know measures mm -hmm. by this time you know not more not not more than a month should go by we have to start treatment mm -hmm. some so yeah i think we went home and they told us this so we need to get help you know we've got small kids so yeah, yeah. first thing we did when we got home is call our moms we called we called my mom we called yeah. his mom and yeah we we told them like hey um this yeah. is what happened yeah so it was a lot <laughs> yeah i can i can imagine quite emotional stuff you know like you said with the young kids to to look at as well and then being faced with what was going to be like a, a huge journey ahead of you you know that yeah journey. okay so did, did the um treatment start straight away what what happened after that? yeah so after that i think my my so my treatment started with a mastectomy so mm. i was scheduled to have a mastectomy in august and uh and i think yeah so we had literally like four weeks to get someone here visas and tickets yeah. and things. Mm. so since my mother-in-law is in south africa and you know the malawi visas are processed there anyway we, we figured it would be quicker for her to get her visa and come here first mm. yeah yeah so so at least we started the the process with hers and uh yeah it, it i think uh she came a week after i had my surgery so mm. luckily her visa literally came out in three days and then yeah. wow. you know weekend comes hop on a plane <laughs> and yeah 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 so um i think uh yeah, it, things were happening so fast, you know. You know, you mm. think, okay. Uh, obviously, back home, I remember, um, you know, my mom t telling me how my dad was busy Googling hospitals that treat cancer. And then yeah. she's like, mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, maybe she should go to India. Maybe she should do this. And then <laughs> she, my mom's like, she's in England. <laughs> she's, <Yeah. laughs> she's fine. Oh, yeah. I'll, she's in a place where you know the treatment is there yeah, yeah yeah on top of that i'm waiting for my other results uh my scans 
you know uh funny strangely enough when they said oh no it's 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 localized to the area it was like a relief yeah, yeah. a big relief like oh okay mm. but uh yeah i think at that i think between even i think between the diagnosis and my operation so much was happening i had to tell my workplace and i hadn't been confirmed because i just started yeah yeah i'm like you know and i remember calling the 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 assistant manager who was on duty i was like hey can i talk to you mm -hmm. oh so by the way um i will have to leave for some time uh mm -hmm. i have cancer <laughs> So wow. I had an operation in the next two weeks and he was like shocked, like wow. oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah, so mm. things happen so fast. So I to, to be honest, between my diagnosis and um operation, I didn't really have time to yeah. process it myself. Mm. My focus was on who can we get, how we're gonna sort out the kids, husband has to get some time off work. Yeah. You know, before my op, do I need to do some meals for the family? Or you know, it was yeah. What are the logistics? The log yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of me, how am I dealing with it? I think yeah. yeah. I think it hit me closer to the op where it's like, oh, you're going mm -hmm. going to go through this just now. So yeah, yeah. That must have been a really really hard. I mean, did you have a uh, like much support network within here in the uk like uh, other um, like uh, malawians around or any other charities or even or? um i think uh i told one of my friends here mm. uh who lives about an hour and a half away but mm. i think to be honest mm. at that time i still hadn't made um like close friends yeah yeah for me to to share yeah. but uh eventually because the chairperson of our community he's a very vibrant jova guy mm. we figured you know what let's tell him this and his mm. wife you know they're the ones that welcomed us when we first came literally when i landed you know mm. Was, mm. so they're very nice people so if we, we thought just in case they notice we've been out of touch yeah, yeah. i told my husband like just let them know um you know this has happened um you know so yeah i think they were very also supportive like oh if you need us to take your kids or yeah, yeah. um things like that but yeah the first yeah the, the support i think was there with the few people we had connected with mm um i think i yeah but very few people that i told at that time or who had found out i think maybe in our malawi community liverpool community maybe it was like just four people yeah. two couples pretty much who who knew one of them found out because uh they know my mom from back home or yeah yeah but uh yeah so no people were helpful but um the charities and things maybe much later is when i knew about them uh, mm. uh the, the things that the the programs they have and things uh but i think at the beginning was mostly the medical aspect when after my surgery uh mm. Yeah. the district nurses that will come to the house mm. um the appointments back at the ho yeah hospital but uh, yeah just enough time to heal but um yeah i think i was quite impressed with the care anyway the care no that, that's good that's good yeah yeah mm. um, but I, 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 guess, I guess with these things there's just so much to think about isn't it you know when, when you're faced with these kind of challenges because obviously your husband as well his work you know how much time the work can give him and who can give him for provide him support as well and then the financial issues around that as well so oh, yeah. everything just comes into into play as to how oh, yeah yeah no definitely i think the financial part i think mm. 
for me also put me in a, a panic because I was like, no, nah, I can't work, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, you know, having to bring people like to get tickets and process visas all of a sudden mm -hmm. you haven't planned for it. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, it, it, it's money. And I think because we were new, we were not sure about, okay, you know, how do credit cards work? You know, yeah. we didn't know, you know, yeah. we were just told credit cards are bad. Don't use them. It's only now we're learning, oh, this thing called credit score, like literally now, you know, but, but, yeah. uh, back then, you know, we, we were still settling in. So. Mm. Uh, I think one thing that weighed heavily on me was the, the financial aspect. Uh, I tried not to talk about it much because I was like, if I stress, my friend will stress, Yeah, you know? Um, uh, yeah, you, and also being that we're not uh, from here, yeah. we, we wouldn't have any access to any public funds. Mm. Uh, yeah. So pretty much on your own and yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, yeah, I think coming from as much as coming from a African background, uh, you're still trying to build yourself up and we just come. So money was a big issue, uh, mm -hmm. concern, like, you know, how are we going to handle this? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but, um, I think mm -hmm. at some point you're just like, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's one of those times you have to balance what's more important because there's uh, issues of our life and and all sorts of things going on at yeah the so it's, it must be quite a very difficult difficult time but uh, you seem to have uh, handled it with the same humility that is reflective of you and your your character and the, the way you are as as uh, as things progressed, you know. So um, yeah. So um, I guess um, now, I mean, before sort of going on to what what happened after as well. I mean, is there again looking back? Is there is there things that you would have learned or would have liked to work in a particular way or lessons that? maybe you could have done differently just for like people who may find themselves in a similar situation, like in terms of advice of how they can handle the situation.